Telemetry data is crucial in Formula One, particularly in pre-season testing, for three main reasons. Firstly, it gives the engineers a graphical demonstration of what the drivers are talking about with their feedback. Secondly, it allows the drivers to compare it with each other. There's uh, different techniques, different options being done at the wheel of their cars, and here they can uh, see what each other's doing and what works better. Finally, it's a chance for a reliability check to make sure that these previously unused cars and components won't break before they actually do, and it costs the team a lot more mileage and money. This is what the drivers will be looking at, what the engineers will be looking at predominantly. This is the data spread page of most of the key tools that are going on. So the absolute bread and butter we've got here is the speed trace. This is the big one that's really highlighted. And you can see the top speed up here, 324 kilometers an hour, breaking down into the first corner, accelerating again up to turn four, breaking again. And that's this speed trace going all the way through just monitors the car's speed simply. And then these are the rest of the input. So you've got the gear choice up on the top, eighth gear down all the way to second gear, up again. You've got a variance in gear choice there. And this is the gears through the lap. The steering trace through the lap, turning right is going up, turning left is when it goes down. Underneath here, you've got a more complicated looking trace. You've got the throttle and the brake together. So throttle is when it's up high, 100% throttle on these straights and then blending out for some of the corners. This is turn 12, which wasn't flat out for this driver today. The brake trace is when it spikes up. The drivers hit the brakes very hard and then blend off as the speed comes down and the downforce drops. And you can see every big braking event for all these corners as well. And finally down here, you've got the time difference, the famous delta times that we're always hearing about. When the red line is below the blue, the benchmark, the driver's going quicker on this lap. And when it's going above, the driver's losing time through most of the lap here. And this is a variance here of minus half a second at the bottom and plus half a second at the top. So we're talking small details here. So first of all, this is useful for the engineers. And this, this run here is the same driver doing a benchmark and then a test item with the same amount of fuel and the same tire compound. So he's gone out and he's come back in after the first run. He'll give the feedback to the engineers and they'll write that down, make notes of it and then he's gone out for exactly the same run again with a setup change. So he'll come back in and he'll give his feedback once again. And this is important information. The driver's feedback is, is absolutely crucial still because they're the ones driving the car and can sometimes drive around issues. They sometimes have a preference for a more pointy car, more understeer in certain places. But with this one, we can see a little bit of what's gone on today for this driver. So the first thing that strikes me is the steering trace actually on this one. You can see through the lap, the red line is a lot more jaggedy it's more up and down you can see here he's fighting a bit of a snap this is the exit of turn eight the the downhill right hander he's had a bit of a, a snap on traction the blue one has as well just a teeny tiny one traction is always difficult on that corner but the red one has been a, a, a bit of a bigger one and uh, and he's lost a bit of time at that corner moreover turn 11 you can see this is a big snap that he's had on the on the red lap the second lap which he's not had on the first lap the baseline so a second case where on the exit, trying to get on the throttle, he's just had a bit of oversteer and he's had to come out of it. Look in here, you can see all the way through turn 12, there's a tiny difference in pace. It's not making a big difference to the lap time at this point, it's really marginal. But look at the steering. The red line is just up and down, up and down, fighting the car through the fast turn 12, whereas the blue line, super silky smooth. So the red line, the car's just right on the edge and from the lap time, you wouldn't see this. There's a marginal, marginal difference, but from the data, you can, and the drivers will be relaying this, and now the engineers can see exactly what we're talking about. Of course, oversteering through these fast corners will be damaging the tires a lot more as well, so this is a really important thing you want to be avoiding. Finally, the last two corners, and you can see this once more. The tire's probably overheating because there's inherent oversteer now in the car, and once again, we get a slightly more snappy oversteer, very marginally, on the exit of uh, the penultimate corner. And final corner, you can see he's really struggling now to, uh, to get the power down and, uh, and fighting the car with oversteer. The main time losses here actually come earlier on in the lap through uh, the braking zone for turn eight. He's a bit earlier on the brakes. Now, the next thing we can see is the braking for the red doesn't look as strong as the braking on the blue lap, the benchmark. Now look, every time the driver, the second run on the, on the red lap, he's not able to hit the same peak pressures and hold the brake force for quite as long. So into turn one, the original lap, he's able to really hammer on the brakes that little bit more and hold it to stop the car a little bit better. The same again at turn four. Turn 11 is much, much closer on this lap. 
but again, you're getting the same trends at turn 13, penultimate corner, and the final corner as well, turn 14. Look at the brake pressure and how he's able to hold it more in, uh, in the final corner. So the driver would definitely be coming in from this run and say, I've lost a bit of rear end grip, lost confidence through some fast corners. We can see that through the speed trace here, through the, uh, the complex five to seven. There's a good speed loss here, and we can see that on the data. The driver's not happy pushing this car as close to the edge because he's fighting oversteer. The drivers will be reporting that. The engineers can see, okay, we've got it. Let's have a look. Yes, absolutely, we can see that as well. And it's important because without the use of data to really understand what's going on with the driver's feedback, you don't know the absolute level. The drivers will be marking their oversteer or understeer one to five, but the data just gives the engineers a real chance to, uh, to look through and see exactly what they're dealing with in conjunction with what the drivers are saying. So occasionally we hear a driver come on the radio and say, oh, what went on there when they've had a big moment, maybe a lockup, maybe a bit of oversteer. And sometimes the data can actually help with, uh, with solving these mysteries to the drivers. They think they've done the same thing and they've had a different result. No one likes to have that at the wheel. You want to know what you're getting when you turn onto a corner. And they can say, oh, actually, the wind just picked up for that moment, or you had a car ahead of you that caused a bit of dirty air, or you hit a bump, or something else. The data is useful for that as well. Secondly, the data is really useful for the drivers to compare with each other. Always the drivers have got to be pushing each other harder and harder, finding more time amongst themselves. Whilst they're brilliant drivers, there's always more that can be at hand. So imagine in this case again, imagine now this is a different driver. This is your teammate now jumping at the wheel. One's blue, one's red, different teammates. So fundamentally, the blue one would be a little bit quicker at this point, but it wouldn't be that by that much. It would be just under three tenths of a second. Red driver here's got to find a bit of time. So again, firstly here, you look at the broad overview. You look at the time loss here is not as quick through, uh, through this sequence of corners, the, the higher speed. But also you look at things like the gear usage now. The, uh, the, the driver in red in this example is a gear down at turn four. He's in third gear, whereas the driver in blue is letting it run through in fourth gear and maybe finding a little bit of time there. And uh, the same again at the final corner. The driver in red here would be down a gear again for the final corner, whereas the driver in blue is happy to just roll it in a little bit faster and, uh, and not upset the car maybe a little bit more. There's tiny little techniques and gear usage is something that can make a big difference whilst being a really subtle thing. The driver might know that, but it's not that easy to, uh, to go and put it into place next time you hit the track. This is where the absolute skill of the driver comes in. And this is why some drivers are basically better than others. And the final big use for the data then is the, the reliability that the, uh, the engineers can see as things are happening. This is live telemetry. So the cars are going around and at the same time as, for example, a driver locks up, they see smoke coming off the tire. The engineers can see that immediately just looking at the screen because it's also just a lock solid speed trace. The, the, the wheel's not moving anymore. So the engineers in the same way can look at the uh, parameters in the engine, the gearbox, the pressures, tire pressures, for example, and see if there's a slow puncture coming or even worse, if there's a, a, an issue coming with the engine, if they're losing water or oil pressure and they need to stop the car before the engine properly blows up and, uh, and causes a lot of damage. So uh, particularly in pre-season testing, when mileage is crucial, but you don't want to be having a lengthy repair, that could be particularly useful. And all that is why this data is so precious to all the teams. Whilst the times in testing can vary quite a lot, the data just doesn't lie. And it's the best way for the teams to see exactly how their car's doing on track, how their drivers are doing, and uh, where they might stack up in the course of the year. Of course, the problem is they don't know what everyone else's data is looking like as well. It's super secretive stuff. It would be gold dust if anyone could find some of this stuff for their rivals because everything is concealed within it.